For those who didn't see me yesterday, I'm Jens Peter Jensen. It's a Danish name, but I'm an Icelander. My great-grandfather came from Denmark. As uh, Lisa was uh, going through her slides, uh, I thought of my thought, there's no need for me here. This is almost all the same. <laughs> I could, could have used her, her slides too. Uh, so um, I will make it short. Um, we, uh, we are an old registry that does both the uh, registry and registrar part. And we don't have any domain laws, so we uh, have to have to uh, build our or have built our own rules regarding this and and, and, and all about the about the domains. Uh, I want to ask uh, questions in my speech to um, and and have uh, have the uh, and, and try to find the answers why why uh, the who is uh, accuracy or privacy is important, or and why the trans transparency of a domain is important. Um, when I ask a question, who is data validation, do we have that? We have a data validation, yes, but then we have a but. Uh, like in Denmark, we have an automatic uh, data validation via link to the National Registry, like it says there, for contacts with the Icelandic Kenitala. That's our social security number. And uh, Icelanders are, are a very innocent people living on an island, isolated for almost a thousand years. So there was never a really a, a need for any privacy or, 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 um, or a danger of, of, of fraud, fraud domains. That all came just suddenly after, uh, yeah, like after 2006, more or less. So uh, when an Icelander registers a domain, he just puts in his social security number in, in a field in our system, and we will fetch all the data. He just has to read through it and say yes. And bloop, he has a domain. That's about 30 seconds. And um, then uh, in 2006, uh, we, uh, when, when a new board came to the company, we, uh, we went through the data and we saw that all only the foreign, foreign registrars had wrong data, and they all more or less had uh, the same address in Iceland. This is because we, like many other registries, we had the uh, rule of a, of a domestic contact person. And the domestic contact persons were, uh, were, uh, were few um, uh, law officers or, 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 or just uh, simple persons. And uh, they, like Lisa said, they forget and uh, we had some very, very old data linked to old domains that were, had, had the same address. And in some cases, the, the street wasn't even there anymore. The, the city had changed and, <laughs> and, uh, and it was, was all wrong. So we lifted in 2006, we lifted the domestic contact rule. And uh, we got a much, much better data after that for the foreign registrants. There is uh, no ongoing data checking or cleaning process. Uh, when you have a few domains, like we, we only have 55,000 domains. It's, uh, this is not a big problem. We uh, have like from 20 to 40 registrations per day. And, uh, and uh, the no, the, the, those, we see them on the screen, they come in, and, and usually the domains uh, wait, wait in a line until they get paid and processed, and, and, and that time is, is really uh, enough for, for the staff in ESNIC just to go through it. If they see obvious, uh, often the ob obvious uh, wrong data is, is a mistake, it's a spelling mistake or something like that. And then they uh, contact uh, the, the, re the registrant or the person who is registering the domain and it gets corrected. Then there is uh, the other question, uh, it's about the transparency. Um, up uh, until like uh, 2000, uh, yeah, up until uh, f uh, just recently, up until last year when we had the ISIS domains registered uh, by ESNIC, we uh, we were all for transparency. That, that you should you should be you should uh, reveal your information and who is uh, uh, certificate as we call it. Because we were, uh, and I'm speaking now as, as this was all in the past, we were uh, the, it was our 
our opinion that, that the, the better the registration, the more, more trustworthiness the domain would become. So uh, we insist that all companies have to show all information, and that is uh, according to, a, to our commercial law in Iceland, uh, that everybody that is selling something on the internet has to have uh, a valid uh, uh, information about the owner and the responsible person behind the website. So, but private persons only have to show a name, email address, and, and a country. And unlike in, like in, in Denmark, we don't have a, a domain law. So uh, we insist uh, still today that, that, that you have to show the name and the email and the country. But uh, yeah, basically it allows private persons to hide all other information, including the city. And <laughs> Uh, this is a funny thing uh, with the city because uh, we have a lot of very, very small towns in Iceland and there is only one Jon Jonsson in that town and uh, they were complaining. Uh, I, that's obvious. Everybody knows who I am if I put Jon Jonsson and I, I live in Grundarfjörður or, or something like that. So uh, the next thing that we will probably have to, uh, will probably hide or uh, enable people to hide is the country name too. And actually, we have one registrant in France that has complained, and he has the name N. Believe it or not, he has just an N, and that turned out to be a right name. It's one letter, one letter name. So we have a, a huge problem with validating uh, uh, foreign registrants. And uh, actually, we are not doing, doing actively, uh, like I said, there's no ongoing cleaning process. And we mainly act on, uh, on, uh, on complaints. When, uh, when there's a complaint about a domain, then we send out, uh, then comes in a process that we call the Nazi system. That's just an in-house joke. Who is playing the Nazi now? And uh, then there's a process that ends either with a, with a response that, that we are happy with. It will be a copy of a passport or something. And uh, the, the, the domain gets validated. Or it gets deleted after 60 days. Here I have a... Uh, two examples of, 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 uh, of a validated domain and a not validated domain. That's uh, it's on, uh, on your side, it's on the right. This is my own private domain. It's not validated. It's just a, a, a person with a very, very common Danish name, <laughs> Jensen.is. And it's just the name and the email address and uh, the country, ES that is shown, everything, everything else is, is, is hidden. But the validated domain is a, is a, is a, is a, uh, a famous domain, piratebay.is, it's validated because the, uh, the address of the uh, registrant is uh, linked to the national registry it, uh, and uh, it uh, will be renewed uh, automatically when the national registry renews its, its uh, information on this on this registrant and this is how we validate with uh, we have for a long time we have wanted to have an graphic do something better as, as this green hack here but uh, this is the only validation we do and then uh, we ask ourselves the question who is privacy for whom and this is a sort of uh, in my opinion it's a it's a it's an in-house uh, interest there is actually no uh, no uh, no real interest in the society, in, at least not in Iceland, for the who has privacy. That is more of a of a of a thing in 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 other countries. Arguments for hiding personal data, we say that weight about the same as arguments for transparency, and this is all about, uh, in a, in my opinion, uh, uh, what what is a domain being used for? Uh, the, you have uh, you can have a very good reason for, for, for hiding the Who is data. On the other hand, you can have just as good reasons for the transparency and the revealing of all your data. Uh, so, uh, like I said, the, the users of the domain, they, they, they are the general public, not the, just the registrants. So, uh, as a user of a domain, I might be entitled to know who, who is responsible. At least that is and has been until now the, the general uh, opinion in Iceland. Now, uh, we've always uh, 
said that the reliable who is data underpins the trustworthiness and uh, you wouldn't be able to run a, a, a public website in Iceland or a, or a public sales site without the, the who is data validation from ESNIC. And uh, in fact, it's, uh, you wouldn't be able to accept credit cards on a, on a, on a selling web page if you didn't have the green ugly hack on in the who is, uh, in the who is uh, certificate. This is what the, uh, the banks and the, uh, and the card processing companies in Iceland use. If they don't see that, you don't get a, uh, you don't get, uh, a license to, to process credit cards or accept credit cards on your site. That's as simple as that. Now, uh, then I ask the question, uh, um, what is a known name domain? And, uh, and we have recently more and more, it is, 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 this is like a lot of things, they, they suddenly get popular. And recently we get, we get uh, groups that are very interested about a domain that is uh, not validated. And we have on the other side groups that are very interested that a domain uh, will be, will be w uh, uh, activated without uh, any information to be shown. And at times like that, we uh, miss not having a domain law. It would be easy for us to have a domain law, and then we could just point at the law and say, this is how the law tells you to do it. But then again, I wouldn't want to have a domain law like in Denmark, where the, the, where the, uh, where the state is telling that I am responsible for the WHOIS data. That would be just hor horrific. Uh, political inst instability justifies who is privacy that has been mentioned too and of course that is that is the case probably um, this is another problem that we are facing uh, uh, as foreign registrants beco become more and more and as I said before we're actually um, very often just just uh, acting on on complaints there's a domain called archive.is. It's a it's a German guy who is very interested in in uh, people's life, and he's always uh, archiving something from the internet that he is uh, uh, sure that someone wants to have deleted later on. And in fact, uh, that is his business. He 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 stores data online and accepts money for deleting it later on. Uh, it's a it's a horrible domain, and, but it's a registrant. And, uh, and we are constantly having complaints about him, but he's uh, validated and uh, we cannot, of course, d not do, do anything. It's just a fact that there are good and, and bad domains and will always be. Hiding behind a, had a domain is really an actual need, we say, unless uh, you are a criminal. Uh, this is something that, that, that we have also recent, in the recent months and, and years uh, gone away from because uh, uh, speaking of political instability, it is actual, uh, actual need for many people to hide from governments and from uh, evil uh, characters even, but to be able to speak out. And having said that, uh, I just met uh, Ethan here uh, just a few minutes ago from Boston, and uh, ISNIC is the, is the, is the uh, is uh, the sponsor of of, uh, of a project in Iceland called IMI, the the uh, Internet in, uh, International Modern Media Institute, uh, very linked to the Pirate Party in Iceland, and uh, that has of course had an influence on the registry, being more interested in uh, in domains that that do not have uh, have a public who is certificate. Yeah, like I said, that politically, politically engaged persons, whistleblowers, and, and, and things like that. This um, is just ongoing business. The, uh, a year ago, when ISIS uh, uh, registered two do dot .is domains for the obvious reason that they were using the, uh, the dot .is as, a, as, as their uh, logo, we had a, a face, had to face that huge problem, and, and, and for the first time in the in the in the 29 years history of of ISNIC, we actually 
took it up on ourselves, not uh, referring to any loss at all, that we just said we don't want this customer. So we uh, closed down the domains. They were registered in New Zealand by a company called I Want My Name, which is uh, a quite an enthusiastic company, uh, uh, registering all kinds of domains. And uh, after that, we, uh, we were less interested in, in domains for uh, persons that really want to hide everything, hide their ass. But uh, on the other hand, we have those uh, good people who are whistleblowers and, and uh, politically engaged, working for the Emmys and working for uh, the Pirate Party and so on, that are keen on, on hiding uh, uh, personal data. But uh, the registry changes slowly, like most of the registers, I guess, in line with the customer's need. And like I said uh, on the screen, if the customer wants more privacy, they will in the end get it. Uh, that's, that's just how it is. And uh, yeah, in the very end, I, I, I said that I put this there because I didn't want to forget it. A domain information in the certificate is, of course, is of course, uh, one information we cannot uh, do anything with, this is, so, this is so zone contact. The zone contact, of course, if we are going to be able to, to serve that domain, we have to have certain information uh, accurate at all times, and that would be the zone contact. So uh, there is no talk about, about, uh, about the zone contact not uh, uh, giving us the information on him. We will always have to have the zone contact, right? And of course, the email. If if the email doesn't work, well, then then we don't don't consider it as a domain. But uh, but we also have an, a, a registrant that doesn't have an email, and it's uh, we've always had that. And then you have to come to the registry and you have to register it on uh, on the customer computer in the ESNIC office. As simple as that. So you have to come to Iceland if you want to register a domain without an email. So. Tak for listener. Any questions? Any questions to Jens, Peter? Uh, I have a question. Uh, in uh, how many domains, in total you have 55,000 domains, how many are verified by ISNIC? It, the, the Icelandic domain, or where the, where the registrant is an Icelander, that would be 75%. Okay. Yeah. And um, about the way now, you, you can hide a whistleblower uh, and you have a takedown policy, you mentioned those two IS domains. Do you have an uh, advisor board or some policy group who helps you with this, those this decision or is it just up to you as a CEO or how, how do you handle it? I mean, this or... But we, we don't have a takedown procedure. Uh, we have only taken down uh, two domains. Yeah. That was the domain of ISIS. Yeah. But that was, in our opinion, not a takedown. <laughs> okay. No, we, we, there, it was a, uh, it was a block. We, the domains were there. He could have changed uh, the registrant name. He could have uh, <laughs> done. He, we we uh, waited for for right information. We doubted the information. He changed it to to an address in in England. And we found out that was a wrong uh, address too. So they deleted themselves after yeah, yeah. 60 day, yeah, yeah. days period. So we don't have a takedown uh, take uh, process. And, and in fact, we have a non-takedown policy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any more questions? No? Uh,